and I will start right away to present first Normandy, where it is, what it is, and uh, some uh, historical facts, and the teachings that we have at the University of uh, Normandy. Okay. So first, where is Normandy? Okay. So here on the left hand side, you can see a, a map of Europe, at least Western Europe, because Europe is supposed to go to uh, Ural, Ural Mountains, after it's Asia. Okay, so it's in Russia. So here you see we plenty of small countries, okay, uh, very small countries. Some are so small that it's difficult to see them. And um, the biggest country is France, okay, half a million uh, square kilometer, okay. But even that, it's not that big if you compare to China, Russia, uh, USA, and so on. So this is why to counterbalance uh, the, the power of uh, China, USA, and so on, uh, progressively Europe is building again, okay? So this is France, and France, in France we speak French, okay? And here, if you magnify this region, okay, you will see that here Normandy is there. So it's uh, in yellow here. Paris is there, where I'm spotting the, the ladder, okay? So a little bit northwest from Paris on the Seine River, so it's a river which goes through Paris, and through Rouen, and through Le Havre, here. You, you have this region, Normandy, okay? So this is for ge geographical uh, location of this region. Now, this region has been inhabited for a long period of time. Actually, even during Neolithic uh, period, so uh, 10,000 years before Christ, uh, it was already inhabited, okay? So, and the reason for that is that we have a nice river, a nice river with a, a gentle flow, so you, you can navigate on that river, and of course it was a, a way to, to import goods, to export goods, to, to transfer people and, and goods, okay. So, this region has always been inhabited, and uh, before Normandy, and during the, after the Roman invasion, Roman invasion it's more or less at uh, minus uh, 50, minus 50 years, okay, before Christ. And then this is, this was called Neustri, okay? And it has been the Neustri for centuries. Uh, and uh, then the, before the Roman, it was the Celt, Celtic people were living there and the Roman, much more organized, at least militarily, could uh, easily uh, defeat all the Celts, which were not well organized. There were some tribes only, and the Roman were extremely well organized, so they could defeat them. But uh, it was a blessing in disguise, almost, because, because the Celts, uh, could not write anything, and we know things for sure. So history became when the Roman uh, arrived in, in this area. Okay, so uh, still at that time, fishery and uh, productive farming was uh, was the main uh, characteristic of Neustri at that time, and uh, the climate was already mild, or mild climate and uh, humid also, and as it is now, okay? So, after the collapse of the Roman Empire, around the fifth centuries, it was really dark ages for, for all Europe, almost, because then uh, it was full of uh, wars and uh, anarchy everywhere. And among the, those people who were putting the mess everywhere, were these guys coming from Scandinavia? Okay, Scandinavia are countries that I can show you here. Okay, here is Scandinavia. So you have Denmark, you have Finland, Sweden, and Norway. So here, Denmark, here, and all those countries here. 
Um, suddenly, those people were maybe too many for the crops they could get. And then they invaded on a regular basis uh, such region here and all the coast down to Spain. Okay? Uh, and it was absolutely terrible. Okay, they, they rape women, they kill monks, and they steal uh, everything. So it was it was absolutely terrible. And this this has uh, been put to an end by the King of France in 911. In 911, the, there is a treaty, Saint Clair sur Ept. Okay, a very small city. Uh, Ept is a river, by the way, and by this treaty, Roland, the chief of all the Vikings, accepted to become Christian, okay? which was a big change, because as he was Christian, he won't kill the monks, he won't kill the, all the clergymen, and so on, he will respect that. So he became Christian, and all his army also Christian. By the way, he also uh, received a daughter of the king of France as a gift, okay? And then he could become the duke of this area, which is shadowed here, okay? Which is more or less what we call now the north or north uh, Normandy or upper Normandy, okay? Upper Normandy is there. So that was the land which has been given to him at the beginning, at Rolon. And uh, of course, this guy was not happy with that, so he, he progressively expanded, you know, to give what is now Normandy. Normandy is all of that now, okay? So you, you have to, to understand that those guys were giants. They were all as tall as that, okay? More than two meters more than 100 kilos, extremely strong, okay? And they were very good warriors and very good sailors. So nobody could do anything against them, okay? So it was fortunate that at the end they could be, they could settle here and they could become quiet, okay? Well, they, 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 keep, they kept, sorry, uh, doing bad things all over the Europe. Even in Sicily, they create a kingdom in Sicily at the moment, okay? Down to Italy. So I can go back once again. Here, they create a kingdom here. For two hundreds of years, this kingdom remained, okay? So you see, they were extremely good sailors. So good that they probably discover Greenland, and the son of the discoverer of Greenland went even to Canada what is now known as Canada. So, so these boats, these boats call, are called Drakkar. So I can write what is uh, the name of that. And these boats have the particularity to be good in high sea, okay, and on a river. You can use the same boat, okay? So they were very skilled at uh, navigating, and uh, they could invade. Uh, they, they'd just been stopped at Paris. They couldn't in Paris. There were too many people against them. And they, they, but where they were going, they went into Russia, Ukraine, and so on. They, they, they invaded a lot of different uh, countries. Okay? And then, uh, then at the moment, they settled. And here is the, the starting point, is Roland, you know, 9-11, 9-42 and then his descendants, okay? One important thing is that the granddaughter to uh, Roland was, was a girl, Emma, who became the wife of the King of England already. And they were Saxon, those guys, okay? Saxons have nothing to do with Vikings. Vikings were blonde, okay? Uh, with blue eyes and uh, giants, all, all, almost all of them, okay? And then y you see the, the, how uh, the, you know, the, the different, the different uh, son could get the, the, the crown of, uh, well, the, the duke, they, were be, they became the duke of Normandy. 
and then up to this guy. This guy, so Guillaume Le Batard, and in uh, English, you see, sometimes English and French are very, very close together because there is a, an accent here, and in English it is a bastard. Because Robert the Magnific, or the devil, okay, Diable is the devil, uh, Robert did not marry with a noble woman. And at that time it was finished. So you were just a bastard. So your life was stained by this very b bad sin, okay? Very bad. But this guy, all his life long, were extremely lucky, extremely. Nothing could defeat him. Even in the bad, the, even the worst circumstances, he could win. It was incredible. So. His, his birth was a, a disgrace almost because, because he was a bastard. But apart from that, everything runs very smooth all his life. Incredible. So he was by his ancestor, the Duke, the Duke of Normandy. Okay? And he started to reign in 1035. Okay? One important anecdote. If I go back once again, excuse me, you see only male here. Only male. The Vikings never sail with their wives. Which means that in 10, 1020, let's say, okay? 1020 is just one century almost after Roland settled. His father could not find any teacher to teach him how to speak Danish. Because the, the, we still say the mother language, the mother tongue. Okay? So as they did not settle with their wives, okay, they married with a Celt woman, okay, but after three generations, no one could speak proper Danish or Swedish, or those Scandinavian languages, okay? So they were very well assimilated in the French uh, culture almost, or was not really uh, the French I speak now, but uh, you see, so you, this has a consequence even now, okay? So what happened in 1064? In 1064, this guy, called Harold, uh, aristocrat, you know, uh, well, well positioned among the Saxon in England, was trying to plot to, to, to become the future king of England. And the, the, at that time, the king was Edward the Confessor, okay? But he, Edward didn't have any descendant, no, no daughter, no son. So he knew this guy in advance that that will be troublesome. And in fact, you remember that here the grandmother of this guy was, was a descendant of the Vikings. Okay, so they, they had some family relationship actually. So, William the Bastard invited him and he, he made him swearing on the relics of saint. So, he made an oath on the relics saying that he will give William the priority to become king of England in case, in case Edwards will die without descendant. So he made that uh, an oath over all he released. At that time, it was extremely serious. You could be killed because of that, okay? If you do not respect your own speech, your, your, own, uh, your own oath, okay? And indeed, two years later, Edward, the confessor, the king of England, died, okay? So William said, well, I should be the king now. But, but 
This man, Harold, was already in England with all his troops, all his Saxons. He said, no, I will be the king. And he, he almost crowned himself, okay, and said, well, I am the king of England now. Well, but uh, William, William said, no, this is not possible. Okay, so I will have an army and try to invade UK. So this is related, you, you know, this, is, uh, this scene is on the tapestry of Bayeux, which has been produced in 1070. So this tapestry has almost 1,000 years. This tapestry is 70 meters long. I said 70 meters. And it, and it gives the historical uh, sequence of even of the invasion. Of, uh, of that. So here yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have books, but we have this tapestry, which is telling the whole story. An interesting fact, which can put you at that time, that uh, the Halley comet was was in the sky at that time, at that very time. Okay. And for those people at that time, they were very superstitious, like the Romans. The Romans were terribly superstitious. And then uh, they didn't know it, if it was a good or ill omen, okay? So it was a good thing or not a good thing, but they saw insi inside this, okay? They couldn't know what it was, but it was a moving star, something like that, a message from God. But what kind of message? A good or bad message? And William, the bastard said, it's a good message. He decided that it was a good message. <laughs> but all his uh, consultants said, well, we are not so sure. It's a good message. <laughs> and then, then it was a battle. It was a battle. And um, a terrible battle. Well, I can tell you a lot of story about that battle because uh, frankly speaking, William were, uh, was not in a, in a good position against Harold. Okay? The Saxons were extremely well organized and they had a big axis. I don't know, you know, you, you know what is a axis? And they, they, they were terrible to, against the, the, the people on the horses, you know, the cavalry. And then they had a terrible problem. They were so successful that William horned the retreat, said, no way, I am all my, uh, all my cavalry is going to be killed. So he said, no, retreat now. And that was a big mistake from the Saxon because they thought that they had the victory already. So they dismantled their ranks, very well organized. And when William saw that right away, he horned again to go back to the battle. And the Saxons didn't have time to reorganize themselves, and they were all killed. All, one by one, no, no mercy. Okay? Even Harold was killed. But more than that, three of his brothers, all the family were killed in the same battle. So the Saxon, the Saxon, uh, you know, um, Prince and all of that, who could claim the throne, were all killed in the same battle. And then for William, it was an overwhelming victory. And then he decided, well, now I am the king of England. OK, so he started by William the Bastard, and now he became William the Conqueror. And the Pope, the Pope was very influential at that time, was very pro him. And then the, the term bastard disappeared, which was incredible. Okay? And then he became, at the same time, King of England and Duke of Normandy. And this is not good. This is not good because Normandy was a duchy between two kingdoms. Okay? France, you cannot have a king who have to obey to another king because he's Duke of Normandy. That's for sure. You can imagine that uh, sooner or later they will, be, uh, they will have a problem. And then by a trick of law in 1204, Normandy is back to King of France. 
but the two descendants of the king of France on the one hand and the king of England on the other hand, the Plantagenet, that's for the Norman, and the Valois for uh, the, the, the Capetians or the, the French, typically French, they start an endless war which lasted more than one century. We call that the century war. It's a one century war. Okay? But of course, it was not constant war, it was segmented by short or long truces. But this was a, a terrible moment. Okay? Uh, and you can imagine the, all the nasty things which happened at that time. Okay? So people could see that this was the end of the conflict when Henry V, King of England, took advantage because uh, the uh, King Charles VI of France was mad. He became completely mad. And then that has weakened, of course, the French. And the King of England was good to make a good um, agreement with another, uh, with the Burgundy. And so it was the beginning of the end of for France, almost. And, uh, and he, he, he managed to have a treaty so that his son, uh, Henry the six, it's not five, it's six. Yeah, I'm sorry, one is missing, okay? Could be the king, uh, no, his son, or, or, yes, Henry the six, uh, could be the, the next king of France. But then came a lady, a lady, a single lady is able to overturn history. A single lady called Johan of Arc. There, there is a film on that, you can see this film, okay? And Johan of Arc started to regain, okay, completely confidence and legitimacy of Charles the Seventh, not the sixth now, it's the seventh. And then um, she started a crusade to liberate the France and Normandy from the English. Okay? The English and Norman was almost the same. And uh, still now she celebrated the 30th of May in my city in Rouen because she was burned as a witch. Okay? They said, well, uh, she's a witch. Uh, she, she's not a normal lady. Okay? And then in 1453, it was almost over, and the British lost a lot of soldiers at that time. And uh, then the sign, the, 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 the treaty uh, to, to put the peace was, you see, signed more than 20 years later. So you, you see the deep resentment between the two nations. British on the one hand, with the Norman at their, at their top, and the French. And I can tell you that since that time, so it is starting at that time, you know, 13 something, the British and the French are not enemy, but like, uh, you know, two brothers who are quarreling all the time. Okay, so it's, uh, it's uh, and all over history after that, we have been in competition between the British uh, uh, the French and the British has been, have been in competition, okay? It's uh, the, the root of that come from that period. And many things after, th after that can be, can be rewrite because of this deep resentment, okay? Think about, for example, with the Germans. We have been at war with them three bloody wars. 1870, First World War, Second World War but we have no problem with them. Still with English, always problems. Okay, so you, you, you see it's, it's, the roots of that are much deeper. Something, uh, yeah, okay. So, we stop with the war and so on because now Normandy is a peaceful area which has been incorporated, you see, in the 15th century and after no big trouble. Th there are no mountains around, so it's an open area, easy to travel, easy to go, and uh, so it, it's a land of art, really, because a lot of painters, Monet, for example, and others, came, and uh, we, we have a, uh, it's a reason to think that Normandy has been a special area for uh, Impressionism to be created. Literature, we have a, a lot of very good writers, uh, 
architecture, music, etc. And of course, cuisine. One of the particularity of the cuisine is that the greasy ingredient is not oil, it's not really butter, it's more cream, which is very healthy, by the way. Okay, so uh, if you visit Normandy, you will have some recipes with cream. So it's too high and too cold and too humid for having wine yard. So we have cider, okay, which uh, you know what is cider, okay. And then when you distillate that, you have a, a schnapps, which is Calvados, okay. And you know some of you the cheese from that region already, okay. About architecture. The, this is a typical house in the country, you know. So it's made of timber. You have timber in oak. Most of the time it is oak. And to fill the space between timber here, uh, it is clay material. Okay? And then makes very good insulation, by the way. It's better than the everything we have done so after. Okay? And the roof, you know, this is typical, really. The roof is made of satch. You remember Mrs. Thatcher, uh, the Prime Minister? Thatcher was, okay, the, the man who, who makes this roof in satch, okay? And you, you have another one. Sometimes instead of just, uh, you know, uh, uh, plastic, or I don't know what they put here, you could have even iris plant here, okay? So you grew some flowers just on the top of the roof, okay? So this is a typical, um, uh, let's say, uh, house in the country. You, you can see thousands of that uh, still now. Okay. Now about the city of Rouen, just to limit to Rouen, because this is one of the cities which has been preserved since so the bombing of the Second World War. Uh, here is a cathedral, okay, with, you know, it's how it is carved, here are those, those stones, okay. So we call that flamboyant. Goth Gothic style, okay, and the Cathedral of Rouen is maybe the best example of that, okay. So it, it needs uh, it needed centuries to be achieved, and actually it's not completely finished, okay. But uh, nobody cares now. And at night during summer, you the, the Cathedral here is illuminated, and you have a show, which contains light and sound and music. And it's very nice, very peaceful. Every night, it's free. You, get, you can just stand here on this, uh, on this square, and, and then you, 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 you see that. It's absolutely marvelous. Here is a, a, a typical street, you know, with this timber and clay uh, house here, another one yeah, just close to that. And this is, you know, a passage which was one of the door of the very whole city. This is the only one which remains, actually. And this is a, a clock. And uh, this clock is dating uh, 1370. Okay, we still have the mechanism. Of course, this is not this mechanism which is used now. And you have a single needle, because at that time they used just one needle. And in Salisbury, south of, uh, south of um, England, at the, this Norman uh, period, uh, you, have, you can see the same clock in the cathedral of uh, Salisbury. Okay, so uh, now a, a bit of uh, economical hints. So, so Normandy is a land of production more than anything else and trading activity because of port, okay? Two big ports, uh, okay? So it's the first port for wheat exportation. Millions of tons, okay, every year goes from one uh, port. Gas, oil containers, and then the, these are the two ports which are uh, on the deep activity for France. It's uh, the biggest activity. So here is then the soon, because it is divided for the moment in Upper Normandy and Lower Normandy, but soon, maybe next year or the year after, it will be merged as a single Normandy again, and probably Rouen, which is the most populated city of all of that. Uh, so all in all, it's 3.5 million. So you see, the density of population has nothing to do with Japan. Okay? It's uh, incredible. Yeah, uh, let's say uh, one city, Osaka, for example, it's 
three times more than all of that. So you, here, of course, uh, the, the density of population have nothing to do with what we have in Japan. Okay? Here in Upper Normandy is two million. Okay? Here, for example, one is half a million only. Okay? Here, 4,400,000 here, and then 300,000 here. Okay? And after, it's even smaller cities. Okay? So it's uh, surprising for you, pro probably. Okay? But you, you see there's a long coast here makes this, uh, make this uh, region open to, to the sea. And here is the Seine River, you see, the Seine River. Yeah. One important okay, uh, spot is there also, it's Mont Saint-Michel. I didn't, uh, I forgot to put Mont Saint-Michel is a well-known of all Europe, because many people gather here. It's a uh, only, uh, only um, spot okay, for a uh, Christian. So, second topic now, I move to Normandy University, how things are arranged. And, uh, okay, so this is a logo for Normandy University. This is an N and this is a U, okay, all together. So, Normandy University, okay, so you see Upper Normandy, Lower Normandy, but soon we could uh, forget about that. So Paris is closed. It's good and bad, okay, because Paris is as big as Osaka. It's, it's the only city that we have like that. Paris, let's say the region around Paris, 10 million inhabitants. After, you go down to 1 million. It's Lyon and Marseille, okay? So Paris is completely dominating all the France. And all the kings of France have also you know, control everything. They were very, very much concerned with controlling this big part of land. Okay, so uh, it, we are the most centralized country in Europe. Paris is deciding for everything, even still now. Okay, but here Normandy is trying to emerge as a, a power to 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 decide for for itself. So here is Rouen. This is the University of Rouen the University of Caen, the University of Le Havre, and then you have some uh, schools here uh, scattered uh, among Normandy, okay? But basically there are three universities, okay? Three universities and two schools of engineers, okay? Here in Rouen and another one in Caen, okay? Personally, I teach here and I teach also in Caen. So I have to take my car, it's uh, 100 and 100 kilometers, let's say, okay, so, and once a week I have to teach in Q4, okay, I have to teach over there in Master 2. So, about, uh, so Normandy University, if we take all, all in all, it's 70,000 students within these three universities, two schools of engineers, we have 2,200 PhD students, okay, and you see the number of staff and so on. More interesting, maybe for you, 7,000 foreign students, which is basically 10%. Okay, so you are very much welcome, of course. And uh, there are a lot of uh, international partnerships, of course, and you, you have a, a wide uh, offer of different laboratories and so on, and we will look at the, the basis of that, okay? So the main objective to build this uh, Normandy University is a, a training, common training PhD students, promotion of transfer of research, promotion for common laboratory, and then, uh, you know, by gathering the means, it, it makes things more powerful, and uh, including to buy expensive equipments and also promoting uh, international development. So, um, we have students from all over the world, but uh, the main, among the 7,000, uh, you know, the main part of the 7,000 uh, foreign students come from Europe, okay? We have now a network called Erasmus, which helps. Uh, we have ECTS, okay, uh, credit, and you can start your, in a, in uh, Sweden, for example, continue in uh, Spain, 
and uh, then in Italy, and you can finish in France your uh, master, for example. All of that is compatible. Okay, I don't say that it is easy, because in, unfortunately, or fortunately, we will see in the centuries to come. But for the moment, it is unfortunately. But maybe the diversity could be also a strength of Europe, because we have basically one language per country. So you imagine, even if we build an economical zone as Europe, uh, as the USA, uh, Europe as the USA, the USA, they all speak English, a little bit Spanish on the south, but it's English, okay? Here we have uh, 20, 27 different languages. Okay, so it is very different. And the root of those languages, for example, Portugal, Spain, France, and uh, Italy, we, sp we speak the same root of language. It's a Roman, okay? But you have the Saxon, okay? And then after, you, you have the slave um, here. So we have three different uh, languages which are, which uh, constructions are, are very different, okay? So, um, now, I am progressively focusing, you know, on my university, but uh, for the University of Caen, you, you know, the other one in, the, in Lower Normandy is very similar in terms of number of students, almost uh, uh, two or three hundred uh, difference, but not more, okay? So the big difference is Caen. The University of Caen has been created in 1432, and it has been the only university in Normandy for centuries, only in 1960 or 1966, it depends uh, what is considered as a, as a starting point, uh, the University of Rouen has been created as an independent university. Before it was, it was existing, but it was the University of Caen. Okay, so the single one was irradiating. And then the University of Le Havre has been created even later as a split with University of Rouen. So in the University of Rouen, 25,000 students, okay? You can see the number of uh, bachelor, master, PhD students, and other which are, uh, you know, from uh, having uh, part-time in the in industry, part-time in, uh, uh, at the university. This is our current uh, president, Kafer Oskul, who is uh, actually a Turkish guy. Well, he speaks French very well, and he's a physicist, he's an optician, okay? And so, at the University of France, she, uh, it's a generalist uh, university, so we have six different faculties, so science and techniques, okay, which of course is the one that I prefer, but we have also psychology, so, uh, sociology, education, sciences, okay? We have medicine and pharmacy, quite strong as well, okay? Humanities, arts and languages, strong in English, you can guess why we are so close to England, so it's the first institute in, for English in France, okay? Sports and uh, sports sciences, and law, law, quite strong as well, economics and management, okay? So six different faculties, so six different deans, and those deans are, uh, you know, uh, for example here, uh, the dean is a colleague of mine, uh, she's a physicist as well, and uh, she's in charge of uh, teaching research and all of that. So it's a, uh, I think Rui is a vice dean, you know it's a lot of work, but dean is full-time job, okay? So uh, we have also five institutes, uh, so for uh, when you don't know as a student, when you, you, you can start by entering at the university by Institute for Technology. It's a, a diploma that you can pass after two years on them, and then you can go to work. So if you don't know if you are uh, a very good student and you are motivated to go very far, a lot of parents are pushing their children towards this institute to make sure that uh, they have something, okay, and after they could decide by themselves, okay. And we have other uh, things for administration and school of education, the future teacher in uh, lower schools or things like that, okay? 
So now research and laboratories, because uh, I, I forgot to mention that the, the whole courses at the university is divided in three parts. First is three years, okay? So for example, in chemistry, year number five, number one, number two, number three. Then you are bachelor, okay? Then masters, master means two more years, okay? And then PhD, okay, uh, says this, which is three more years. So we call that the scheme three, five, eight. Okay, so if you go the full run, it's eight years at the minimum, if you don't retake, and if you go through your thesis without any trouble. The thesis could go uh, a little bit beyond that. So here are the different field which uh, for which we have laboratories, and of course we have before that we have uh, we have uh, for example in chemistry clearly we have uh, uh, we can graduate in chemistry, then you have your master in chemistry, and then okay, and for all of the, of these uh, five different uh, field of research we have of course teaching, okay, which okay it does not. Uh, prevent to have new st incoming students at at every stage, okay? So some of these laboratories are big enough and good enough to be affiliated to the CNRS. CNRS is uh, the, the body which, which is governing research in, uh, in, uh, in France, except for, um, for medical, uh, medical and, uh, and also for plant. We say INRA, we have that we don't have INRA in uh, our university. Okay, so we have some federation of uh, of uh, research as well, and uh, one strong is Normandy Mathematics. Okay, and uh, I belong to the Institute for Material Research myself. Okay, so we have different, as you can see here, and we have seven school of doctorates. That's pretty new because before. Uh, before, um, I mean, only five years ago, we didn't have the school of doctorate, and every supervisor could decide by himself how long a thesis could last. Okay, but uh, some colleagues were not terribly fair, and they, okay, so now everything is regulated inside the school of doctorate. The supervisor can still decide. But, uh, you know, it is, um, uh, it is framed, let's say. You, you cannot do anything. So we have 850 PhD students, and uh, per year it's almost, so you see, if we could do things within three years, this should be the third of that. You could see it's lower than that, which means that uh, it's difficult to, to do everything within three years. More, most of the time it's four years. So actually, it's more the scheme three, five, nine, rather than three, five, eight. But the government is asking for three, five, eight, repeatedly. But uh, okay, it's uh, it's difficult. So now I can focus on the Faculty of Science. Okay, so more or less three thousand students. This uh, you have one uh, lecturer and researcher in front of you. And we have 55 different diploma, and three schools out of the seven belongs to the Faculty of Science. Here you, you have some buildings for polymer. Here it's polymer, and one more of my lab is there. Okay, just behind. So I put in the alpha alphabetical order, so there is no rank here. It's biology, chemistry, computer sciences, electronics, environment, uh, okay, mathematics, and physics. Okay. Strangely enough, my lab laboratory is a mix between chemistry and physics. So we are uh, sitting on the fence. Okay, so it's possible to be uh, in between, let's say, for some uh, laboratories. Okay, so now I can briefly explain the, the what is inside, for example, a master degree in mathematics. I don't know if there is any mathematician here, no, not so many maybe. Okay, and uh, so you have uh, always the same uh, scheme. So you have two majors, okay, so some majors, 
and then after you can decide uh, some options. Okay, so I don't know if uh, the scheme is the same here. And uh, for computing, science, and uh, processing of information, it's the same. You have five major, and you have to decide two out of five. And um, so this is the, the school of doctorate in which I am. And for master, I am also teaching in science of materials in physics. Okay, so this is where I, I teach. But you have energy, fluid, and optics inside. Okay, so that's so for. Uh, the major. In chemistry, so the, as in many different uh, universities, organic chemistry is very strong. Okay, this is their building and we share this building with them because this is the logo of my uh, laboratory. Okay, so we share a little, let's say, uh, one, one, one eighth, let's say, of this whole building is uh, is our facilities, but uh, sooner or later I will get out of this building to have a, a completely new building for, uh, for us. So, you, you know, two laboratories. Okay, so it's a, it's a big laboratory for synthesis and well known in France at least. And um, in the biology, okay, we have also uh, good teams. Okay, and some of them are affiliated to the CNRS and in CERM, so which is a label of uh, quality. And then uh, also an important uh, f uh, department uh, in, the, in the university is the faculty of, uh, of uh, medicine and pharmacy. Okay? So there are wisely three together inside the Rouen downtown. You have here the hospital, okay, a big hospital, because this is the hospital for the whole uh, Upper Normandy. Okay? It's a referent hospital for the, so it's, uh, you see the number of beds and so on. Okay? And uh, here you have a, a good uh, cancer center of research. Becquerel is a Nobel Prize, he's a guy who, who uh, discover uh, radioactivity. Okay? You see his name is resembling to mine. Yeah? <laughs> it's a typical uh, Norman name. And uh, the Faculty of Medicine and Pharmacy is there, okay, close to, to that. So uh, my daughters, for example, uh, uh, studied uh, here, two of them. Okay, and then this is another view, you know, the Seine River with an island in the middle. Here the, you have another uh, part of the river going there. And you see it's very peaceful and you have a lot of loops like that. And uh, the, the old city is there. This is a cathedral, okay, with a spike, uh, very high, uh, several hundred meters here. And uh, this is a dwarf. And uh, the old city is there, okay. When it was medieval ages or even before, only this part was inhabited. It, here, it, on that side, it was only marsh, or and, uh, things not uh, that good, okay. But then uh, it, uh, it, become, it became, uh, after the... So 16th century is uh, progressively inhabited after that, okay? So I thank you for your attention. I am ready for questions.